Hello and welcome. You're watching AD4 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Adirayo Senami. Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari has affirmed his commitment to the economic community of West African states' ECOWAS single currency agenda. The President, however, warned that the ambition for an eco regional monetary union could be dangerous if member states do not comply with the agreed processes of reaching the collective goal. He also expressed worry over the decision of Francophone countries that formed the West African Economic and Monetary Union to replace the Sefer Franc currency. South Korea's Trade Minister Yu Mung Yi on Wednesday declared her interest in becoming the first female Director General of the World Trade Organization, WTO. She said for the WTO to overcome the current crisis, the role of a middle power to mediate conflicts among member states is important as South Korea will be able to serve as a bridge based on its growth experience through trade. Meanwhile, the WTO has accepted the nomination of Nigeria's former finance minister and former managing director of the World Bank, Ngozi Okonjo-Iweala, for the same position from the African bloc. The nomination process began early in June in the hope of finding a successor for the current director general, Roberto Azevedo, who for personal reasons is vacating the post a year early in August. Meanwhile, Ghanaian President Nana Kufuado has expressed his sincere apologies to Nigeria over last weekend's demolition of the Nigerian High Commission building in Accra, saying that a probe has already begun and some suspects have been arrested. The federal government of Nigeria had early this week condemned the demolition of a residential building at its embassy in Ghana after a businessman who laid claim to the land took a bulldozer to the site. However, Senior Special Assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on Media and Publicity, Malam Garba Shehu, says Nigeria will not pursue a retaliatory line of action against Ghana. No fewer than 9.2 million cases of COVID-19 and 477,269 deaths have been confirmed worldwide since the outbreak of the virus in December 2019. The United States of America is the worst hit nation with 2.39 million confirmed cases and 123,000 deaths. Brazil comes second with 1.15 million cases and over 52,000 deaths. Russia follows with 607,000 cases and 8,513 deaths. India, on the other hand, has confirmed 456,000 cases and 14,476 deaths. The UK so far has 306,000 cases and 42,927 casualties. Africa has confirmed 324,392 cases, with five countries reporting the highest number of cases on the continent. South Africa has 106,108 cases, Egypt 58,141 cases, Nigeria has 21,371 cases, Ghana 14,568, and Algeria 12,076 cases. We'll take a break now and when we return, Malawi awaits results of rerun election. Stay with us, details coming shortly. I am a refugee from Rwanda living in Kenya, but I'm also a nurse working on the front line during this COVID-19. I'm a refugee from Iran living in Sydney, Australia. I'm also a civil engineer running online series of live conversation with doctors for the community. I'm a refugee in Ghana, but I'm also a nursing student. I help my community to stay safe by sharing this free information on COVID-19. I'm a South Sudanese refugee living in Nairobi, but I'm also a communication officer giving timely and verified information on COVID-19 to my community. I'm a refugee from Burundi living in Rwanda. I'm also a refugee college guidance counselor providing support to refugee students during this pandemic. I do it for you. I do it for you. I do this for you. I do it for you. I do this for you. I do it for you. Welcome back. You're watching 84 TV Radio News Update. Malawians are awaiting election results as votes have been counted after Tuesday's rerun election. Polling was reported to be peaceful, though incumbent President Peter Mutsarika has accused the opposition of acts of violence in the center of the country. However, the results may not be declared for several days. 
In May 2019, President Peter Motarika was declared winner of the elections, which was later annulled in February 2020 for vote tampering, leading to the recently conducted rerun elections. The World Bank on Wednesday approved a $750 million International Development Association credit for Nigeria's spa sector recovery operation to help the country improve its spa sector. The bank's country director, Shibam Chaduri, said the lack of reliable power has stifled economic activity, private investments and job creation. Fixing the power sector is what the country needs to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. Meanwhile, about 300 workers in a rice processing factory, popular farms in Kano State, Nigeria, have been rescued by police officers after allegedly being locked in and forced to work throughout the coronavirus lockdown. The company had promised an additional $13, equivalent of 5,000 naira a month to their $72 monthly salary, threatening to let go workers who refused the deal. Police spokesman Abdullahi Haruna said the plant has now been shut down and the owners have been investigated for holding the men against their will. The manager of the rice mill, who identified himself as Abdul Karim, expressed regrets, saying he was not aware of the terrible working conditions. Nigeria's Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi on Tuesday in Lagos State, launched two new tugboats by the Nigerian Port Authority to facilitate the movement of ships in the nation's ports, adding greater value to the maritime sector and the national economy as a whole. Amechi assured that work is ongoing to link all seaports to the standard gauge rail line, even as the government is determined to link up the 36 state capitals, including the federal capital, Abuja to the standard gauge rail line services. Meanwhile, Chairman Board of the MPA's Board of Directors, Akinwumi Ricketts, said the development marks another landmark in the Nigerian Port Authority's quest to provide world-class services and compete with other ports in the world in terms of efficient services, competitive cost, safety and security. And that's it on 84 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. You can join the conversation on our website at www.84tvradio.com. Please follow us on our social media platforms at 84TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at 84TV Radio. Many thanks for watching. I am Adirayo Senami.